What's up, people? This is RGC, and welcome to another pickup video. Um, as stated before in many of my previous videos, um, you won't be seeing as many pickup videos, but I have been doing relatively well this month, and I figured I would share it with my subscribers. Um, this video will consist of some local retail pickups as well as some local trades. I actually put a um, wanted ad up on Craigslist and uh, I met some cool people and I was able to trade for some pretty good stuff. Um, one of the trades uh, consisted of some Super Nintendo games that I want to get rid of. I'm not really a big Super Nintendo guy. There's nothing wrong with it and I have nothing but respect for those who collect for it, especially uh, those CIB collectors, complete inbox collectors, but um, only about like 10 or 11 games, maybe up to like a maximum of 20 from the Super Nintendo actually interest me. Um, many are uh, from childhood that I actually currently own. But anyway, moving on, uh, a local trade with a local collector um, traded some Super Nintendo games, uh, which included Mario RPG. Um, not really into that. I really don't like that game, and I really don't see what's so special about it, but whatever. And uh, Secret of Evermore, and a few other games that I just really wasn't into. Um, and I got some cool games here. Uh, first up, I got Legend of uh, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Um, complete great condition very happy with that it's a pretty fair trade uh he and i did so um he got a total um probably retail value of around 121 30 dollars including those two games i mentioned and some of the others and uh i got some pretty good stuff too another game i got was mario double dash mario kart double dash complete Good condition, black label, of course. Have to have those. Um, got Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Um, that label kind of tells the story, but that's okay too, because it's up for trade. Uh, locally, of course, I really don't trade online. Um, I have never been ripped off on the trade, and one of the reasons for that is I don't trust everybody. So, hey, I really have nothing to lose. Um, so if I trade locally, I don't have to really worry about that situation, especially if I just keep keep it safe, um, you know, meet people in public areas, uh, well-lit areas, preferably daytime, of course. You know, just kind of be cautious on Craigslist because, you know, people will jack you, kill you, whatever the case may be. Um, it's happened plenty of times, but met some cool people. Um, anyway, back to this game. Uh, the label does have some damage. If you notice a lot of Ocarina of Time cards, the labels tend to wear, the gold wears off, and uh, these labels start to absorb some of the grime, crud, dirt, whatever, oil from hands and stuff like that. Um, in some cases, it actually looks cool and looks kind of aged, um, kind of to go along with the theme of the game, uh, kind of with the sword and shield and stuff like that. That's actually kind of cool, but in this case, it's kind of kind of dirty looking uh, but it's okay I can trade it uh, another game I picked up from him was uh, Mario Kart 64 a uh, little label damage up there not a big deal but um, I'm happy with the games I got and the condition uh, I, I think I'm pretty happy with what's going on here so that was a successful trade with a local collector moving on no cash involved uh, Along with that same ad, I met another guy. I've actually traded with this guy before, but he ran across my ad, and uh, he didn't know who I was. Anyway, I traded away some more Super Nintendo games that I wasn't interested in, and I got some more uh, cool items. First up, I got Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2 for the Wii. Um, it's complete. Good condition. Happy with it. Might need a little cleanup, but whatever. Happy with it. Uh, got a, a paper label, well, um, non uh, collector's edition a copy of Majora's Mask. It does have a little label damage up there at the top, but it's great trade bait. Um, so happy to have it. Kind of expensive game, considering you know how much the game cost when it came out and how much a loose copy of the game is now, especially retail. 
So, but um, yeah, happy with that. And the prize, the main thing I wanted from him, you know, and I traded well for it, was another copy of Super Mario All-Stars Limited Edition. Uh, it's complete. Of course, this is just a flip open thing here. Uh, open it up. Um, it has the game right there, and it has the commemorative uh, music CD and all that other stuff in there with this. And uh, the Mario History thing is actually still sealed. I think it might have a DVD or something in there. But uh, yeah, very happy to pick another copy of this up. Um, some of the collector's editions for the Wii um, will retain their value, just like this one, uh, the Metroid Prime uh, collection. Um, that's pretty valuable as well. It will retain its value. Um, like I say, stated, this one will too, and I have two copies of both, so I'm happy to have two copies of those. There's nothing wrong with having doubles of good stuff. Um, don't listen to people who say, you know, always got to trade off your dough. No, you don't have to if you don't want to. And you can just save them until someone approaches you with some good quality stuff you actually are willing to trade for. Don't let someone bully you into trading something or feeling guilty about what you have. Uh, if there was a case, I really wouldn't have much of anything. Uh, so do you. Uh, next up, um, I got a box and manual for my Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. I have the gray cart variant and I saw the box um, online. I do some uh, online purchasing, not a lot because I do pretty well locally uh, with a lot of the retail stores around here. Um, but I did get a box and manual for it. I got a nice protector for the box as well as for the cart. So happy with that, not a valuable game or anything. Even the variant really doesn't add to its value, but it's cool to have complete. I really like the Nintendo 64 boxes, uh, the color, the designs, how unique they are. They, the boxes have a lot of personality. The Nintendo 64 doesn't have a lot of good games, if you ask me, but the boxes are pretty cool. Um, so happy about that. Uh, another pickup, um, local store. Got myself a red PlayStation 1 controller. I've had one before and I traded it away. I didn't know that these things are kind of hard to run across or hard to find in some instances. Let's see. I'm trying to see. Um, SCPH1080. That's the model number on this controller. 1080. Happy to have it. Looks good. Great condition. Clean. Got a black non dual shock version uh, as well. Um, you can hear the thunder outside, it's kind of storming. <laughs> um, retail store pickup, it was six dollars and 95 cents. Had it with it. I kind of like the uh, non dual shock PlayStation 1 controls. You know, I'm a big PlayStation 1 guy, love the PlayStation 1. Um, anyway, moving on to some more uh pickups here. Um, local store pickup. Had some games I wasn't interested in keeping. Uh, I would consider them junk games. Uh, a lot of sports games and filler and stuff I'm not into. You already know me. I got real high standards, really discriminating taste. Uh, my collection is, you know, I kind of hold it to high standard. Anyway, um, trading some junk, walked out with this stuff. Uh, got a copy of Super Mario, uh, excuse me, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Um, retail value, at least at the store, was $42.95. Um, I had enough trade credit to just walk out the store uh, with this for free. Um, good condition, manual, no cracks in the disc, uh, great. It is a player's choice, but I'm just going to buy a black label um, cover art and either give this cover art away or something, but you know I don't do uh, player's choice version of games um, and Nintendo was smart enough not to actually make a player's choice disc you know everything's the same all you got to do is just co change the cover art and you're good to go I wish Sony would have went that route but they didn't um, neither or they didn't do it on the PlayStation 1 nor the PlayStation 2 I don't even think they did it on the 3 either but whatever Nintendo did a good job there's no such thing as a player's choice disc just a cover art. So that's great. Have to have it. Great game. Um, 
there are a lot of competitive Smash Brothers players around locally. So I was really happy to get this, especially below eBay. This game goes for like $65 on eBay right now. It fluctuates though, depending on the time of year, how big the scene is at the time, popularity, whatever. Um, I saw it in a stack about to get put out at the store I went to this morning. Something told me, eh, you want to go to that store. I did. I wanted, I was looking for a second copy of the game and I got it. So always listen to that voice in your head that tells you to check a store out and you might get yourself lucky. Um, another pickup, um, it's a real cheap game, uh, Rubik's World for the Wii is only $1.95. I don't see this game that commonly, and the Wii's gonna have a lot of hard to find games. A lot of them will be released digitally, but some of these games are not gonna be released digitally, and they might eventually get pretty hard to find. Not sure if this is gonna be one of them, but uh, I don't see this game that often, at least me personally, locally, so. Yeah, have to have it. Oh yeah, and to add to this video, I picked these up um, early in the month. Kind of forgot about them. Nothing really spectacular, but whatever. Uh, one of which is uh, Excitebots, so the Trick Racing for the Wii. This is uh, another copy I just got. Um, heard some of the Excitebots or Excite games, excuse me, for the Wii. Um, they're pretty fun. I uh, don't see them too frequently in some, uh, in most cases at least and uh, kind of desirable in the sense of uh, people just wanting to play them. Nothing, you know, really spectacular or extravagant value-wise, but uh, people do tend to have pretty good fun with these games. So that includes Excite Bots and uh, Excite Truck for the Wii. So I have to pick that up for $1.95. And another game picked up, I kind of wanted it for a while, and that's Sonic Colors uh, for the Wii. I think I only paid $5 for this. Um, I heard good things about Sonic Colors, and these days, within the last 10 years, if you've asked me, if you ask me, nothing much good has really come from Sega, uh, but they kind of did push Sonic in the right direction with this one. I think they've been kind of overdoing it with Sonic the last few years. I think they need to give him a break and work on some of those other great franchises that they have, such as, hey, uh, Shining Force, maybe? Uh, you know. Fantasy Star or something of that nature, but yeah, they just keep Blood in the market with Sonic. Either way, uh, pick this game up. Uh, it is the holographic foil like cover art, which is pretty cool. Happy with it. Um, I actually look forward to playing it. It's complete. Both of them are complete, and I've heard good stuff about this game. Thank goodness you can use a classic controller with it. That's the thing I really don't like about a lot of the Wii games. You can't use a regular controller, but or the classic controller attachment. But whatever. So have to pick those up. A few more pickups. Swung by a GameStop. Um, not the biggest fan of GameStop. You already know that. But I am taking advantage of their uh, Wii um, deals and whatnot. So ran across uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, the Crystal Bearers. It's only $4.99 without the pro membership. I'm not a pro member, so it's cool. Um, kind of happy to have it. Great condition. Um, not the biggest fan of the Final Fantasy series, nor am I really a big fan of anything done when Square and Enix got together. I kind of like their separate work when Square was Squaresoft and Enix was just Enix, but whatever. I'm happy to pick this one up. Um, it's complete having a hard time finding complete decent quality Wii games now at GameStop so I tend to pick up the better stuff if possible. Um, Soul Calibur Legends um, been kind of wanted for a while not the expensive not the traditional Soul Calibur fighting game it's like an action adventure game or something like that but uh, pretty cool have to have it complete of course and uh, got an Exceed uh, title here He's probably published by him. That's uh, Valhalla Knights uh, Elder Saga. Um, it's only like $10. Um, happy to have this one. I might collect all the XC games for the Wii. Just depends. I kind of need uh, the Little King story. Uh, maybe one or two others. But I'm um, doing pretty well with that. Happy to have it complete. 
manual was like mint. I don't even think it was ever touched. And uh, that's nice for me, collector wise. Um, it'd just be nice if people left the manuals in the cases. That's kind of one of my pet peeves. You don't have to worry about finding the manual or losing it if you leave it in the case. And finally, to wrap it up, I got some more boxes for some of my Nintendo 64 games. I'm not buying so many games now. I'm trying to complete a lot of the games I have, especially loose cards. And one game that I want to do that for is R. Oh, well, let me just show you. Punk's Bad Fur A. Uh, I got myself uh, two boxes, and one box came with a manual. Had to buy it online, but happy with it. I can easily get that pre played uh, sticker off the box. I know how to do it without damaging the box. Original box, uh, Blockbuster Video. And another thing, too, I don't fool around with replicas or repros. Uh, reproductions, anything like that. I want all original stuff. Um, I don't like the cases with the cover art that is the same as the game, and I don't like the stuff. I like having original stuff. Um, if it's not original, I don't want it. That's just me. That's just how I do it. Um, so I'm really happy to have original uh, boxes for these games. The manuals are original as well. Um, you got replica labels on games these days you got replica boxes reproduction games people trying to pass them off as authentic or real when they're not you know sometimes people will be up front with you sometimes they won't so you kind of have to watch this stuff i'm real particular about games that are older they have perfect labels because sometimes those labels could be a sign if they're perfect that it's a reproduction label um and the uh, counterfeiters as well as those who just make the labels um, and they don't try to pass them off as real um, they're getting better at it so you have to kind of have to watch this stuff but um, yeah I wanted original stuff and I got it I don't mind the card having a little bit of label damage if it's not excessive and I don't mind a little bit of box damage as long as I can know for sure it is real um, I'm pretty happy with it so back with these I know people may ask, like, why you got two copies of Comfort Bad for the CIB? Because I want to. Um, use your money how you want to. Do what you want to do. I'm not in your pockets. Don't get in mine. Uh, anyway, that pretty much wraps up uh, this um, video here. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. As far as other updates go, um, like I said, I'm still working on trying to complete more games. Either Super Nintendo, uh, get the manuals and boxes for those as well as for the Nintendo 64. All my disc games are of course complete because I don't collect loose disc based games. All of those black label, just gotta get that black labeled out. Uh, working on a few, playing through a few games. Some gameplay might be uploaded soon. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all that's really going on with me. Anyway, have a good day, uh, good luck out there. Peace.